What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Lee that is currently approaching the United States, approaching New England. We have Margot meandering out in the Atlantic. And we have 97L that is continuing to get further and further organized as we look at it right here. So here's what we have from the National Hurricane Center. We're going over all three of these systems that are out here right now. Here's what we have for Hurricane Lee. This is what we got going on. Here's the public advisory. Here's the maximum sustained winds. They have re reduced to 85 miles per hour or 140 uh, kilometers uh, per hour. We It's moving north at 360 degrees at 14 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is 957 millibars, and it's currently 230 miles west southwest of Bermuda. So that's what we have going on right here. Lee's large wind field moving northward over the western Atlantic. A hurricane watch remains in effect for parts of Maine all the way to the U.S. Canadian border, as well as New Brunswick. And tropical, st and we now have tropical storm warnings in effect for Bermuda, the Massachusetts coast, Martha's Vineyard, and uh, and that last area right here. We can show you on the cone uh, right here. So. We now have tropical storm warnings issued for Bermuda and parts of Massachusetts. I expect more to be issued in the coming days, in the coming hours, too. So we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to progress. Here's what we have going on. Lee is a large hurricane. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 90 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out 310 miles from the center. A sustained wind of 39 miles per hour in Augusta 51 was recently reported in LF Wade National... Uh, International Airport in Bermuda. NOAA buoy 41048 uh, located 90 miles northeast west of the center has Lee uh, packing a sustained wind of 54 and a gust of 67 miles per hour. So this thing's a pretty uh, interesting situation. We now have storm surge rep uh, uh, numbers out as well. We have uh, for parts of Massachusetts two to four feet, including Cape Cod Bay. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, May, uh, but mainly through the uh, through there, we'll go ahead and try to pull up the storm surge map to kind of give you an idea. Yeah, th through pretty much one to three feet from New York, from Long Island all the way to the U.S. Canadian border, with two to four feet near Cape Cod, Chatham, Provincetown those areas over there so we'll have to keep an eye on it for sure storm surge is going to be a pretty big threat especially for the uh, this part of the uh, the coast right here i know you're saying patrick it's only one to three feet how is this a big threat well let's just put it this way the new uh, the northeast northern united states is not exactly built for hurricanes so even one to three feet of storm surge could cause a lot of damage to beaches could cause some damage to low-laying homes if they are there so that's why i'm saying it's going to be a big threat so that's what we have going on with Lee. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what's going on with Margo out here. 80 mile per hour hurricane expected to continue gradually weakening, weaken and kind of make that loop-de-loop -loop as it's going right here. Public advisory has this thing going at 80 miles per hour. Pressure of 978 millibars moving at moving north northeast at 6 miles per hour. So that's what we have going on. Hurricane force winds extend out 80 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds extend out 230 miles from the center. So yeah, it's not really going to be doing uh, being much of a threat except for these areas in the Azores over here down the road and maybe just shipping interests. So if you're planning on do doing some shipping, avoid this whole area over here. Now we'll go ahead and show you 97L because ladies and gentlemen, a lot has happened since last night. We now have a 90-90 chance of development in the, in the next while. That means we have a 90% chance of formation in the next 48 hours and a 90% chance of formation in the next seven days. So here's what we have going on. Showers and thunderstorms show some sign of organization in association with a broad low area, low pressure area located midway between the Lesser Antilles and Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions are expected to be conducive for additional development and the system is very likely to become a tropical depression during the next day or so while moving west northwestward to uh, south uh, to northwestward excuse me at 10 to 15 miles per hour across the central tropical atlantic once again 90 90 for chances right there so that's what we have going on with all three of these systems as we continue to look at them now we're going to go ahead and show you some models that we have pulled up. We'll go ahead and start with the European model. We'll go ahead and show you the 0Z right here. Here's the European 
as we continue to show it right here, it has Lee approaching uh, parts of the U.S., parts of Massachusetts, Maine, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, New Bruns uh, Brunswick. So that's what we have going on. It, the European has shifted a bit to the east, and it's expected to make landfall near Nova Scotia right here, east of the U.S.-Canadian border right here. So we'll have to monitor that. Maine's likely going to get a lot of impacts from this. Same with Massachusetts and New Hampshire, primarily due uh, to storm surge and maybe some wind, tropical storm force winds right there. And then we have this thing starting to ramp up in intensity. And we have a weak high pressure system building up right here that'll push this a bit more to the west before starting to make more of a northwestern jog as time continues to go on. And then this high pressure system is going to act right here according to the latest European to potentially block off uh, any impact to the United States. Although it does look like as of right now, according to the latest European run, it does look like it's going to be making a beeline towards Newfoundland, bef uh, but, uh, but that'll be after it peaks as around a category two to category three hurricane, according to what I'm seeing. So kind of a similar situation to that of Hurricane Larry from 2021, to be honest, according to what the European is showing. Now we'll go ahead and show you the GFS model right here. A GFS has this thing making landfall near Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, this area right here, while bringing a lot of impacts to Maine, Massachusetts, potentially Rhode Island and New Hampshire as well. While this system over here starts to organize and develops, a weak high-pressure system builds up. It's likely going to slip through the cracks of this high-pressure system unless this thing gets further to the east than anticipated. However, the GFS has been pretty interesting, and the GFS is actually calling for this invest, which will soon become Hurricane Nine. Nigel or Tropical Storm Nigel to impact a similar area to that of uh, what Lee is doing right now. So we'll have to monitor that, but keep in mind that's like 10 days out, so take that with a huge grain of salt. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Now we'll show you the CMC model. Here's what we have. Lee's making landfall near Nova Scotia, near New Brunswick, while bringing some impacts to Maine and Massachusetts. Meanwhile, this system over here starts to organize and develop. It looks like a weak high-pressure system starts to build up right here. And then the CMC actually has this thing making a close pass to Nova Scotia and then maybe impacting Newfoundland down the road. Keep in mind, this is 10 days out, but the CMC is kind of agreeing with what the Europeans saying. So I thought, thought it would be pretty interesting to say that at the very least. NavGem model right here. Here's the 0Z NavGem. Gem. Zero Z has Lee making landfall near Nova Scotia, near Halifax. Well, bringing some impacts to Maine and Massachusetts. While this system over here organizes and develops, there's a bit of a high pressure system that fades away. And then as this thing uh, continues to move to the north and encounters this high pressure system, we'll have to wait and see what the NavGem is saying down the road. Last one we're showing you is the ICON model. This is a similar situation 180 hours out. Has Lee making landfall near the U.S.-Canadian border while bringing lots of impacts to Maine and Massachusetts while this system is organizing and strengthening into a hurricane high pressure system builds up right there so we'll have to keep an eye, uh keep an eye on it especially for Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and the and the northeastern United States again. So that's what we have going on with the models. Now I want to bring attention to a couple of things real quickly. First thing I want to bring attention to is this thing right here. This is the Climate Prediction Center Global Tropics Hazard Outlook. And according to the, according to them, on week uh, three, they are anticipating some more tropical development here in the main development region and Atlantic Basin, and potentially into the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico. Keep in mind, this is at least two weeks out, but and we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. But at the same time, the this climate uh, climate prediction center has been spot on this whole hurricane season, despite this being an El Nino. So we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on for sure. Now we're going to go ahead and kind of show you some conditions of what Lee and then uh, future Nigel and then potentially this area of uh, this area of interest that the Climate Prediction Center is picking up on is going to be looking at. So here's what we have going on. Global sea temperatures. Lee's been doing a number with the global sea temperatures, especially in the Atlantic Basin. It's robbed uh, the uh, uh, robbed the basin of all those warm waters that we had before, which is good news because that could hopefully pot uh, potentially stop some future development from developing as we start seeing more more cooler and cooler waters in this part of this, uh, the Atlantic Ocean. But what's not going to be cooling down is the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean Sea. So if a tropical system develops in the Caribbean Sea, similar to the Adalia in t uh, just a, a, like a couple of weeks ago, then it's going to be moving through very warm waters, moving through, I'm not sure what the wind shear is going to be like at that point, but for now with the wind shear across the Gulf of Mexico, there's very little wind shear until you get to the, around, uh, until you get to close to Louisiana. Louisiana 
and this area right there. So definitely something to monitor going forward. The shear is not going to stay like that the whole time. So please do keep that in mind. But right now, if it was to develop, there'd be little shear stopping this thing. There'd be plenty of warm water and lots and lots of ocean heat content still in the Gulf of Mexico and especially in the Caribbean Sea. If anything in late September moves through the main development region, passes through the Lesser Antilles and enters the Caribbean Sea with the ideal conditions, things could start to organize and intensify. There is still plenty of time and plenty of scenarios for that to happen in this case. So this is something we need to monitor down the road. But for now, our main focus should be on Lee over here and Invest 97L. We'll keep you updated on both of those systems. We'll also keep you updated on what the Climate uh, Prediction Center is saying as well. So uh, we'll monitor all the threats in the tropics. So now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs of pretty much both Lee. And of, I, yeah, I'm, we're going to show some model runs of Lee as of late. So that way you have a better understanding of what's going on. Here's the HMONS uh, situation right here with Hurricane Lee as it's making its final approach towards the New, uh, New England and Atlantic Canada. This thing continues to move pretty much due north. It makes landfall in Nova Scotia near Halifax while bringing tons of impacts to Maine, Massachusetts, potentially New Hampshire if the system gets large enough. becomes post-tropical, moves through uh, through Quebec, and that's pretty much the last we will hear of that according to the HMON. H-Wharf model for Lee, similar situation, continuing to move north while gradually weakening although the h wharf has this thing making landfall near the u.s canadian border and that's still going to bring a lot of impacts to maine new hampshire massachusetts maybe even rhode island if they if they get caught up in that so we'll have to monitor the impacts for them as well this thing becomes post-tropical and that's the last we'll hear of that next thing we're showing you is the halves a for lee continued situation where it gradually weakens as it's approaching the u.s canadian border it makes landfall near halifax and nova scotia and then new brunswick while bringing lots and lots of impacts Impacts to the uh, to New England. I know I keep saying it like a broken record. Becomes post tropical. That's pretty much what we have for, for the consensus on all the modeling so far. Uh, for the halves B, halves it making landfall a little bit more to the west, but they're all zeroing in near the United States Canadian border or Nova Scotia. And either way, at this point, this thing is so large that it's going to be bringing impacts to New England. So we'll have to keep an up uh, an eye, eye on this, and we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel on Lee, on Margo, on Nigel, well, the future Nigel, rather. And we'll also keep you updated on what the Climate Prediction Center is saying for the next couple of weeks. With that being said, we're going to close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said... Have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.